Hey guys, Brett Weiss here. Welcome to another video. If you like retro gaming, you might as well hit that subscribe button because you have come to the right place. Now I have a question for you guys. Is there a game from back in your past that you remember reading uh, reviews for or you remember seeing ads for or maybe you saw a commercial about it on television but you never got the actual chance to play it? Now there's definitely a game for me like this. The game is Preppy for Atari 8-bit computers. Russ Wetmore programmed it for Adventure International, and he took inspiration from a book called The Official Preppy Handbook, and from just the preppy craze in general. Now, I'll get to that in a moment. What is a preppy? You may be wondering if you're younger. I will cover that in a moment. But preppy is similar to Frogger, and I remember seeing this game in action, or at least on the page, on the printed page, you know, the screenshots, and I remember seeing the box for it, and it just looks so cool, so intriguing. I was absolutely fascinated by this game because here's a game that's similar to Frogger, which is one of my favorite games back in the day it was, and I still enjoy it today, and with some new elements that make it different. And the reviewers made it sound great, and I was so intrigued, but we did not have any computers in our house growing up, so I had no way to play it. I didn't have any friends that owned the game, but now I can finally play it. Thanks to the good folks at Atari Age who have created it for the Atari 5200. Now, Russ Wetmore, back in 2016, he did release the source code for this, so I'm assuming that's what uh, Atari Age used to create this for the 5200, because it appears to be the same game that was on Atari 8-bit computers back in the day, the one I never had access to. So now I can finally play it on my Atari 5200. Now, Preppy, it was arcade-like and it was so cool, but it was never created for a console. It was only on computers, so I had no access to it, and my friends didn't have it, like I said, but now I can finally play it on my Atari 5200. Super cool. Now I know what a lot of you are saying, well, you could have emulated this. FBI, open up! Yeah, sure, but I never did, never played it, but I just ordered it from Atari uh, Age, and now I have it and I can play it on my 5200. That is absolutely awesome. And I've really been enjoying it. And I will get to the review of the game in just a minute. But some of you are probably wondering what a preppy is. Now, technically, a preppy is someone who went to preparatory school. You know, a nice school that prepares the kid for college. And preps, as they're, uh, you know, abbreviated to frequently, preps, preppies, whatever, are typically, you know, rich, privileged kids or people... Uh, that are maybe a little snooty. Uh, they wear preppy clothes like polo and Azad shirts. At least this was what it was in the 80s. You know, the collared shirts with the little polo player, Azad, uh, you know, the little alligator on the shirt. Uh, maybe wore penny loafers. Preppies wore those a lot. Preppies were generally clean cut and, uh, you know, made good grades or whatever. They were just considered privileged kids. So there's a preppy for you. And Russ Wetmore did take inspiration from the preppy fad that was going on. The protagonist you play as, Wadsworth Overcash, kind of a funny name, he must gather up golf balls on the Nasty Nine golf course and take them down below. Yes, preppies played a lot of golf because that's a rich man's sport, right? So this game is very action oriented like Frogger and the bottom half of the screen does look a lot like Frogger. You're walking across the bottom of the screen and you're dodging real lawnmowers, not R-E-A-L, R-E-E-L, the kind people push that don't have a mower. So you're dodging these types of lawnmowers. You're also dodging golf carts and bulldozers. And as the game carries on, you know, gets faster in later levels, there are more vehicles on the screen and you're dodging these, sort of like the highway in Frogger, and then the top half of the game looks like Frogger as well because it's a river. And you're hopping on canoes for safety and on logs and on alligators. Yes, a lot of similarities to Frogger here. And you're hopping on those, and if you hop in the river, you lose a life. So be very careful. Gotta have some precise jumping, especially in later levels when the alligators are a little more pesky and they don't want you jumping on them, you have to be more precise and the objects are moving faster and the canoes are shorter and that kind of thing.
it gets, you know, around, there are 10 levels in the game. Around level six, the game gets fast enough and hard enough to where it presents a challenge for sure. Very fun game. Now in the center of the screen, that uh, lane you see in Frogger, there was a snake that would go across it in later levels. Uh, here you've got a giant frog and it definitely will squash you. When you get ran over by a vehicle or whatever in this game, it does squash you flat and that's a humorous element in the game. It's a lot of fun. Now, unlike Frogger, now Frogger you hop all the way to the top of the screen and to get into a home bay and then you got another frog up to go into a home bay. You don't do that here. You get a golf ball. Now you begin the game, you pick up one golf ball on the screen and take it down to the bottom. And then as you go on, you know, there's two golf balls and then three golf balls, and you can't carry more than one golf ball at a time. You have to pick up one golf ball, take it to the bottom of the screen, then get another golf ball and take it down to the bottom of the screen and on and on. Why Wadsworth can't carry more than one golf ball at a time? I have no idea. Why can't he put it in his pocket or hold it in two hands? I don't know, or just, you can hold three golf balls in your hand, but whatever the case, he can only carry one at a time and there is a time limit, like in Frogger, so it's a challenging game, especially after around level six or level seven, it gets very fast, very challenging, and it's just a great action game. The difficulty level has a smooth, it amps up smoothly. The graphics are excellent. You can tell what the items are, which is not always a given in the early 80s. They're nicely detailed and they're multicolored, which is another thing that's not always a given. The music is really nice, including Humoresque Opera Number no. 1 by Antonin Dvorak. Like Frogger, the game has some nice classic music and um, it's, just, it's just a really nice looking, nice playing game. The controls work well. Uh, the Atari 5200 controller, I used the original 5200 controller on it and it worked well uh, with the sometimes pesky 5200 controller, the non-centering controller but it works great. Now at the bottom of the screen, you are walking instead of hopping. That's a subtle difference from Frogger. At the top, you are hopping across the logs, but you push the button in conjunction with a joystick to make that happen. Now in 2016, Russ Wetmore did release the source code uh, for Preppy, and I'm assuming that's what Tar Atari Edge used in programming this game, a 5200 version of the game. But whatever the case, I'm just glad the game is out there and available and I can play it on my 5200, super cool. Now, there was a sequel to Preppy called, naturally enough, Preppy 2, and it's a maze game, and I've never played it either. And I would love to play it as well, if Atari uh, Age comes up with a cartridge for this, which I don't think they have, I didn't see it. I haven't really exactly looked for it, but I would love to play Preppy 2 as well. Now, Russ had talked about a possible Preppy 3, maybe one set in space, but any plans for it got mowed under by the great video game crash of 1983, unfortunately. So that's it, folks. Preppy, you can order it from Atari Age. Now, this is not a sponsored video. I did buy my copy, ordered it from Atari Age, and it was great. It got here very quickly, and they included some stickers with it, and the communication was great, and they were... Uh, awesome. Great company, Atari Age. Albert and company do a great job over there, so that is awesome. Anyway, in the comments, let me know if you ever, if there's a game from your past that you never actually got to play and that you've only gotten to play recently or that you've never, still never played. And let me know if it holds up. You know, if you remember seeing it back in the day and it looked really cool and you finally got to play it, but it just doesn't, it's not as good as you thought it might have been. I'm happy to say that Preppy is indeed a very good game. I'm enjoying the heck of it. I would give it an A- because it's not super original, but it's tons of fun and I can see playing this for a good time to come. If you're not super into, you know, simplistic action games, your grade might be a B or B plus or whatever. It's a really good game with really good graphics, good controls, and it's just a lot of fun and it is challenging, so I highly recommend it. I love it. Preppy, and I'm super glad to add it to my collection. It's always fun to add a new game to one of my old consoles, whether it's just filling in a title, you know, from the original games, or it's a new homebrew. Super, super cool. Very happy to add another 5200 game to my collection, especially since it is a port, basically, of a game I never got to play back in the day. Pretty awesome. All right, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for liking the video. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. We will talk to you in another video. 
If you're a fan of my work, you might wanna consider supporting me on Patreon. For just a low fee each month, you get a lot of extra content. Another way to support the channel and my writing career is to buy books direct from me, including the 100 Greatest Console Video Games, the Classic Home Video Game Series, it's like an encyclopedia set, and this massive bad boy, the NES Omnibus Volume 1 A through L. I will put links in the description of this video where you can buy books direct from me and where you can support me on Patreon. Thank you guys so much, I really appreciate it.